Did you work out why Thomas's granddad thought that when he said, I'm more of a baked bean fan, it was funny and he ruffled his hair? You can't grow baked beans in a garden, can you? Let's carry on from just before we finished yesterday. It should have been difficult to get excited about any type of bean when I knew there was a dragon just metres away. I doubted even magic beans would beat a dragon. But it was hard not to get caught up in Grandad's enthusiasm. You couldn't help but enjoy yourself with him around. And it wasn't just the constant supply of caramel toffees either. Flicker had been happily exploring the hedges and eating his fill of greenery. He was careful to keep out of sight, but every so often I had the feeling he was playing a game with Grandad and flitting down behind him and then zipping off again just as he turned around. There he is, creeping up on Grandad and flying away before he sees him. Eventually I saw the bright shine of his scales dim a little, a sign that he was getting tired and he disappeared among the cactus-like arms of the dragon fruit tree. When he didn't re reappear, I breathed a sigh of relief. At least if he was asleep, I didn't have to worry about Grandad spotting him. After about an hour of digging and planting and reading and replanting, when Grandad changed his mind, I leaned my spade against the old shed and rubbed my, the ache out of my arms. You know, I don't think we're going to get much jam out of that there tree, Thomas, Grandad said, offering me a glug from the flask. Nothing left but the skins of the last few fruit. I reckon the squirrels must have got them. And I've not seen hide nor hair of any more fruit. Are you sure we just shouldn't pull the old thing out? I leapt up and spluttered through a mouthful of lemonade. No, we can't. I'm sure there'll be more. I wonder why there wasn't any fruit on that tree. Grandad didn't look convinced and I could see him eyeing up how much more space there would be for his exotic beans without it. I wish I'd found out more about the tree. The books in the library show me loads of different types of dragon, but they'd all come from eggs, not trees. There was no mention of a dragon fruit tree in any of them. What if Grandad was right? What if there was no more fruit? I wouldn't be able to stop him pulling it out if one little crop of squirrel snacks was all the tree had to show for itself. He'd want it gone for sure. Right, Chipstick, let's see if you're right. Come on. Grandad pulled open the door to the garden shed and disappeared inside. I followed him, trying not to cough at the dust and earthy smell. The shed leaned awkwardly and I couldn't help wondering if it might just give up and collapse if either of us so much as sneezed. On one side there were wooden shelves loaded with empty flower pots, bits of string and ancient looking packets of seeds. Grandad reached up to pull something from the top shelf. It was a huge old book. He swept dust from the leathery cover. I spotted this in here the other day when I was rootling about for a trowel. The old woman who lived here before must have left it. She left all sorts of bits and pieces as it happens, but unlike the Guatemalan rain stick, this might actually be useful. It's an encyclopedia of plants. We laid the book on the little countertop under the window, brushing away as much of the dirt as possible first and sending a family of spiders scurrying to safety. A world of plants, it's called, Grandad said. I was thinking of using it to look up things to grow. Let's see if it's got anything to say about your tree, hey? The cover was thick with grime, but the lettering of the title was all fancy, like some old spell book you see in films. I'm sure it creaked when we opened it. Inside, the pages were stiff and yellowed, crammed with illustrations and information. We flicked through, but there was no sign of the strange, spiky dragon fruit tree. Until at last, Grandad cried, Bingo! and thumped his hand down on the counter, half choking me with a dust explosion. And there it was, the Pitea, our dragon fruit. I ran my hand over the picture as if I could feel the spiky leaves on the page. Looks as if you're right, he said. Says here we should get five or six crops of fruit at least. He started reading to me about flowers that bloomed for just one night, but I only had eyes for one thing. In a swirly bo bordered box at the bottom of the page was a tiny picture of a dragon and a paragraph of text. I'd found the legend of the dragon fruit. I read the first words, my heart jumping around inside me, eyes skittering over the letters in my excitement. Sadly, my excitement soon fizzled out. Legend had it that dragons were supposed to breathe out the dragon fruit. 
but it didn't say anything about dragons actually growing inside the fruit, like Flicker had. I peered out of the dirt-streaked window, wondering if there really were more dragons out there, or if mine was the only one. At home again, muddy and tired, I set all the books from the library out on my bed. Maybe there was something I'd missed. Flicker flew over and started scratching at the covers, but I didn't think Mrs Olive would be too happy about that, so I found him a cereal packet to destroy instead. I read until late, until my eyes burned with trying to keep them open. Finally, I gave in and wriggled down under the covers. I loved nighttime with Flicker, and not just because there wasn't so much poo and mess to clear up. You see, when I lay in bed, he left the toy box and curled up against me. I draped my dressing gown over him, just in case Mum or Dad peeked into my room, and just lay there with him, listening to the murmurs he made while he slept almost like a cat purring. I slept so soundly with him beside me and I had fantastic dreams too. I dreamed about flying over icy glaciers with volcanoes erupting below me and ice storms swirling across the open land. The dreams were so vivid that I woke up remembering every colour and detail as if I really had been there. I always woke up with such a happy feeling. And sometimes when I opened my eyes and saw Flicker curled up, he was changing colour in flashes one after the other, as if he was dreaming a happy dream too. His scales rippled from red to orange to blue to white, pulsing like a fiery kaleidoscope. That night though, I woke up with a shiver. There was no warming breath across my chest. Flicker wasn't on the bed. I peered across the shadowy room, waiting for my eyes to adjust searching for the glow of the little dragon. I finally spotted him perched on the windowsill. No wonder I hadn't seen him straight away. He seemed to have turned a dusky car charcoal grey in the darkness. I tiptoed over and he was staring out at the inky sky and the rain that was falling. Flicker, I whispered. He swung his head round and saw me and a little wave of colour rippled down his body. He turned back took one last look at the sky, then stretched his wings and flew up on my shoulder. As I scratched his head, the clouds parted and the moon cast its light into the room. I smiled as his scales shimmered their familiar ruby red. I wondered what he'd been looking at. Was he searching for other dragons too? I still didn't know if there really had been dragons in all those fruit. I tried to look earlier, but Grandad had kept me too busy. Seeing Flicker staring out like that, I decided it was time to find out once and for all. I had a plan. I was going to tell Grandad I was doing a project on bats at school and that I wanted to come over and do bat watch in his garden. Grandad would have done his jobs for the day and hopefully be ready to put his feet up and take it easy. So I'd be able to have a good look at the tree and have a proper hunt for dragons. And as for Grim, I just had to hope he'd be taking it easy too. The next evening, I arrived at Nana and Grandad's fully prepared. In true undercover style, I'd brought my night vision goggles, binoculars, clipboard, a book on bats. I was almost beginning to believe in the bat project myself. Of course, it nearly backfired when Grandad started reeling off facts about the habits of our native bats and got so into the idea, he decided he would actually come and join me. Um. I'm supposed to do the project without any help, I told him quickly. Don't worry, I won't do the work for you, Chipstick. I'll just watch. Scout's honour. I shifted uncomfortably. Any other time, I'd have loved to be out in the garden with Grandad. We could be worm watching and we'd have a great time. But I couldn't miss this chance to look for more dragons. So I pulled out the only thing I knew would stop him in his tracks. I think you'd better take it easy, Grandad. You've done loads today. And then I added, think about your heart. It was such a low blow, I even winced saying at it. And for a second, he looked really disappointed. And then in true Grandad form, he gave me a smile and said, right you are, go on then, off you pop so I can get back to Gardener's World. Which of course made me feel 10 times worse. I hunted everywhere for dragons, peering into and under the hedge, braving the nettles and battling the brambles. I'd seen Flicker dart out of sight enough times to know dragons instinctively hid from humans. Still, 
I'd hoped that with him flitting around in plain sight of me, any dragons would feel reassured enough to let themselves be seen. But despite that and my best efforts at hunting through the undergrowth, there was no sign. Flicker settled on my shoulder and sneezed a glittering spray of sparks. This is hopeless, I moaned, nursing a scratch. There's nothing here. Am I wrong about this, Flicker? Are you the only dragon? He flew up and ducked behind me. Eagerly, I spun round, hoping that he was trying to show me something. He was. It was my smouldering bum. One of his sparks had landed on the seat of my trousers and was smoking. I battered at my backside. <sighs> I sighed. Maybe I was looking in the wrong place. After all, it was Grimm's garden that, been, that had been messed up. I turned and looked at Grimm's vegetable patch and at the little lean-to greenhouse that was attached to his shed, full of tempting greenery. A new polytunnel was lying in pieces. The plastic shredded and the seedlings had been covered... Sorry, the seedlings it had been covering scattered far and wide. Surely this was proof that there had to be more dragons. Unless Grimm was right, and it was just vandals. I needed to have a closer look, I whispered to Flicker. I wasn't sure why I kept telling him stuff when he was only interested in demolishing Grandad's lettuces, but I had to talk to someone. Before I could change my mind, I stepped over the little wire fence that separated the two gardens. For a second, I had a feeling that I was being watched. I stood frozen, listening to the breeze rustling the leaves on the hedge that bordered the fields. In my mind, I could picture all sorts of things lurking behind that tree. But now really wasn't the time to let my imagination run wild. I reined it in and reminded myself that the scariest thing around here probably was Grimm. I looked around, scanning the garden up to the dark house where he lived. There was no sign of him, not even any lights on. If I was lucky, maybe he'd gone out for the evening. Flicker fluttered over to join me. He settled on another plant with huge leaves and started nibbling at it. I made my way further into the garden, hoping my luck would hold. It didn't. I searched around the plants and beanstalks, stepping among broken pots and bits of polytunnel. If dragons really had demolished Grimm's garden, then where, where were they now? In the end, that question only bothered me for about 20 seconds because of the low-flying cucumber. As I said earlier, cucumbers and dragons are not the same at all. And one thing a cucumber definitely can't do is fly. Or so I thought. Except this one plummeted from the sky, almost knocking me out. I looked up just in time to see two shapes spiralling over Grimm's greenhouse. One of them was clutching what I guessed was a bunch of carrots. Glittering sparks lit up the sky and fizzled out around them. What do you think he might have spotted in the sky, flying around with bunches of carrots? We'll find out tomorrow.